All right, so what do we have here? Right here is the SA-1000. This is an amplifier by Dayton Audio. And this is what I'm going to be using to power my Timpani. Peerless by Timpani SCW350. The new subwoofer I just got for my home entertainment system. And yeah, this thing promises a whole lot. All right, so let's jump right off into this. This is a Class AB amplifier. It is rated for 1,000 watts. More specifically, it's rated for 950 watts at 4 ohms. And it is what I got my STW350 wired down to. It is 4 ohms. And I can't wait to get this on here. Alright, so why Class AB, some of you guys may be asking. Why not Class D, some of you guys may be asking. Well, yeah, it's true that Class D is a lot more efficient. It is lighter weight. And it don't get as hot as a AB amplifier get. But the perks or the upside to AB amplifier is that AB amplifier seems to sound better. It seems to produce sound a whole lot better, in a lot of people's opinion, than a Class D amplifier. So why did I go with the Class uh, AB amplifier? Well, in my case, I went with a Class AB amplifier because when I looked at the price point per wattage in home theater, this was the cheapest thing that I can find. And no, this is not a brand new amplifier. Okay, I bought this refurbished over at Parts Express. And I hope that this thing worked as it's supposed to work because I spent a lot of money on it. Well, I say a lot of money. I got it at a deal. It was about half off uh, refurbished. And um, I thought it was a steal. I picked it up. This thing have rave reviews over at Parts Express. Everyone I've seen demo it. Um, they swear by it. They love it. So hopefully this is something that I'll love as well. So let's get off into some of the features on the front of it. Right here you have a frequency setting. Go from 18 to 80. You have a bandwidth setting that goes from 0.1 to 1. You have a level adjustment, negative 14.5 to a positive 6. You have a phase adjustment from 0 to 180 degrees. You also have a frequency adjustment from 30 to 200 hertz, that is. And you have your gain adjustment, of course, from 0 to 10. And over here is the power button. Pretty straightforward. Nothing too fancy about it. It's a amplifier, and it has all the traditional settings of an amplifier. One cool thing I like about these adjustments, these little buttons right here, is that, as you guys can see, they protrude quite a bit, but you can actually push these in to lock them and to keep wandering hands away from them, like my little eight-year-olds I got in the house. So you can adjust them while they're like this, push them in, and there you go. You can lock that setting in, ain't got to worry about nobody messing with it. At least those who don't know that they can just do this, <laughs> right? So, power button is pretty much the same. It goes in, and it comes back out. Pretty straightforward. It has a brushed aluminum finish. I kind of like this finish. And despite it being refurbished, it's still in good shape. Not a, not a lot of scars on it. Doesn't look like it has a lot of wear and tear. I didn't, didn't have any, like, pungent smells coming from it or anything of that nature so I'm guessing whoever had it previously must have taken care of it this thing does weigh a lot um, I don't know what the shipping weight is on it but I do have to handle this with two hands it's very very heavy that's another downside to AB class AB amplifiers is the weight class D tend to be a much lighter technology whereas class AB a lot heavier technology so let's get this thing turned around so you guys can see what the rear of it looks like. I'm going to set you guys down right quick. And let's try to get it turned around, guys. This thing weighs a ton. I mean, like, seriously. Ugh. All right. It is one heavy subwoofer. I gotta look and see how much the shipping weight of this thing is. But anyway, you have a three, three prong, a three prong AC mains.
connection right here. It is 120 VAC or 120 volts at 60 hertz. That's standard here in the States. And then you have your 230 volts, which is standard across these. 12 volt trigger right here. You have your speaker outputs right here. And this is a minimum impedance, impedance, I'm sorry, a 4 ohms combined load, as you guys can see. And then you have the date and audio, the model number, for anybody who want to go pick this up or do a little research on it. And right here you have your remote turn on. It can be set to on, meaning that that's a manual turn on. You can turn it to audio. <laughs> audio. You can turn it to auto, meaning that once it senses from a 12 volts trigger, I'm guessing, it'll, cut on, it'll turn on automatically. Or this could mean, oh yeah, I'm sorry. The 12 volt trigger actually is right here. That's the 12 volt, 12 volt trigger setting right here. Auto is where it senses from the actual inputs. So if you put it on auto, you don't have to really worry about it. It, it kind of goes into standby mode and it just waits for a signal through the input here. And once it senses a signal through the input, it turns on for you. And this is the bass booth, which I will be leaving off. I mean, this is a thousand watt amplifier. Why would I need a bass booth? Uh, you have the subsonic filter here. And let me give you a little bit more information on a subsonic filter <clears throat> because some of you guys may be um, interested in that. The uh, low pass adjustment is from 30 to 200 hertz and they have a high pass output. They have a high pass output of negative 3 dB at 80 hertz at a 12 dB octave. A low pass adjustment like I just said from 30 to 200 hertz with a 24 dB octave slope. Phase adjustment is from 0 to 180. We talked about that. And a parametric EQ frequency is 18 to 80 hertz. And the power requirements, of course, we talked about that, which is 120 volts to 230 volts. And the weight of this, believe it or not, it says only 28 pounds. I don't know, maybe I ain't eating my Wheaties and vitamins, but this thing weigh, it seems to me like it weighs a whole lot more than just 30 pounds. 28 pounds, roughly 30 pounds. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it on it as far as, um, oh yeah, the subsonic filter. I'm sorry, people. That's what I, <clears throat> I actually came up here to talk about. The subsonic filter is actually a um, negative 3 dB at 18 hertz. So you can actually leave that on or off. It's up to you what you want to do with that. And uh, yeah, then you have your inputs here. You have your low frequency channel. Uh, you have your left and right input channel. And you have your high pass uh, output, which we spoke about earlier. So yeah, that's it for, for right now. And oh uh, yeah, let me talk about the efficiency of this guy, right? So the downside to or the flip side to AB amplifiers versus a class D amplifier is that class D's tend to be more efficient. So what do I mean by that? Efficiency in terms of the, the actual power that it receives from the wall, right? It outputs that power. The, the way that it outputs that power is that it uses more of what it inputs for output. You understand what I'm saying? And they give you a percentage rating on that, meaning that whatever it gets on the wall is going to use a certain percentage of that back to you. In terms of class AB, they have been known to be uh, a better sounding or a, a good, a great sounding as far as like quality amplifier. But the efficiency of them has always been a downfall. They get very hot. They need these massive heat sinks, things of that nature, the internal components of them are very bulky so they tend to weigh a whole lot whereas with this amplifier in particular it has an efficiency rating of 86 percent that's right 86 percent is rated power output at 0.92 percent thd 
is 497 watts into 8 ohms, 950 watts into 4 ohms. So, yeah, it's, it's claiming 86% efficiency. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm going to be hooking this thing up to my STW350. Again, that's, by, uh, that's, peer, that's a peerless subwoofer. Peerless by Timpany, I should say. STW350. I do have some demos coming for you guys. But right now, it's just a brief introduction. And, uh, yeah, expect more videos from this. In case you guys are wondering what the terminals look like here, let me get this off. I guess it wouldn't be fair for you guys for me to just do an unboxing and not let you look at little stuff like this, right? So, again, that's pretty much what that looks like. Yep, pretty cool. You can get some banana plugs in there and make it do what it do. That's what I'm going to be doing. I got some banana plugs I'm going to be putting in there and um, hooking it up like that. It did come with, in case you guys want to know, all I got, and this is a refurbished unit. I don't know if the brand new units come with more than this. Uh, another thing I want to point out to you guys is that this thing is rack mountable. I Means you can put, you can mount it in a rack, and it came with hardware for that. So this is the only hardware I got with it was these two rack mounts, adapters, and power cable. It was the only two things that came that came with it. No RCAs, no um, speaker cables, or nothing. It just came with this stuff right here. And that's it. That's it for right now. Please look forward to more videos on this guy right here because I will be bringing them to you. Uh, but until next time, for all the new guys, please leave a thumb up if you guys like the video. Uh, click, you know, so feel free to subscribe. Click the notification bell. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more videos like this. And until next time, it's your boy D, and I'm out.